It's the Inbox. Today we're going to talk about GNOME and its pronunciation, which I'm sure most of you never GNU. First question is from LOL. Why do you guys keep saying G-GNOME? Isn't it just GNOME? I can't say it. Isn't it just GNOME? It sounds really weird. Thanks, LOL. Uh, okay, dude. There's a huge reason why we say it this way. And a lot of the more informed people will say it this way because it's, in my opinion, the correct way. Now, I know Nikki Pixel and some of the internet celebrities out there who talk about Linux do say GNOME. She's wrong. <laughs> She's... <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite that simple. But yeah, let's let's get into it for just a minute here. First off, guys, let's play a little game here. This is a gnome. This is what a gnome looks like. And this is a gnome. This is gnome. Can we do it together? Gnome? Gnome. 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 I love this game. Sometimes I play it for hours. You should play it too. All right, why is it gnome? Wendell. Well, okay. You have to understand that gnome was originally part of the GNU project, which goes all the way back to Richard Stallman in September 1983. So this is a 30-year-old software project. Now, GNOME is not 30 years old. It's newer than that. It was started in 1997 by Miguel uh, Miguel de Icaza. <laughs> I think you just destroyed that. I think it's Miguel de Icaza. Miguel de Icaza. I, de Icaza. I, I, yeah, I don't know. We're not native speakers. He's from Mexico, and I'm doing a very bad job with his with his name. But Miguel de Acaza. Yeah, it was started in 1997, and it was under the GNU umbrella. And the GNU, some people even say GNU slash Linux, because Linux is just the kernel, but there's all these utilities that go with it, like Bash and Sed and Awk and Grep and yeah, all these. Yeah, you can't just use Linux. No, a lot yeah, of people say Linux, and it's like there's a lot that goes into Linux. That's why we have the different flavors of Linux, because Linux is the kernel. The operating system is made up of all these things, and Linux is the kernel, and GNU is everything else. And so Linus came along and was like, look, a kernel, ta-da! And that was the last piece that was missing. Richard M. Stallman and his group had done you know, pretty much everything else. I mean, they had a head start. It was 1983. Yeah, they've got the arms and the legs and the eyes and the ears built, and they're like, we just need someone to build heart and lungs. Heart and lungs, that's what we need. And then there's Linus Torvald with yeah. heart and lungs. So, and GNU, G-N-U, stands for <laughs> GNU's not Unix. But wait a minute, you can't do that. GNU cannot stand for GNU's not Unix because it's G-N-U. How it's does a, this work? It's a recursive algorithm. The G <laughs> in G-N-U stands for GNU. Sort of like the MIT uh, logo? Yeah, well, no, there was, a, there was a group at MIT that did a recursive postscript file. So it was effectively an infinite resolution postscript file. Which was, you know, kind of a joke. If you had a, a million DPI printer, it would print the postscript file, and then somebody was like, "Hey, we need it, and we need a recursive acronym," and so they made a recursive acronym, uh, acronym GNU, and so GNU stands for GNU's not Unix. I don't think this keyboard's working because I tried to type something and it ended up on Nikki Pixel's page, so I'm gonna get away from that before she starts saying GNOME all over me. Maybe she replaced the keyboard firmware. <laughs> with her GNOME operating system. <laughs> or, yeah, just, you know, I don't know. I'm not hating on her, guys. We, that's just our opinion, so. She can say GNOME if she wants to, but if she wants to be cool and come sit in the back of the bus with us or at our lunch table, she's going to have to say GNU. I was actually surprised on Wikipedia. They have an audio pronunciation guide of the GNU project. You know, there's a bunch of guys on YouTube, and you know, this is how you do it. Lowell did the right thing. He wrote us an email and said, why do you do this? He asked a question so that he could get an informed answer. But in the comments on YouTube, there were so many people that were freaking out, like, guys, it is GNOME! 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 Why do you say it that way? You sound so stupid. I wish you would stop saying it that way. And then one person, you know, I think uh, Pistol actually, she linked the Wikipedia page that has the clear pronunciation here. And she said, see Wikipedia for pronunciation. And his, and his response was, oh, because Wikipedia is the end all for pronunciations. I just had a, a flash moment of terror that maybe we're the hipsters here. And it's like, we knew what it was before it was a thing. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing about this is that how can you be a hipster when it's just the correct way to say it? That's like saying that if you pronounce something correctly in the natural world out there, instead of saying something incorrectly, you're a hipster because, oh, you, you must know the etymology of that word. Well, GNOME um, is, I mean, it's like the, the windowing environment, and it's really popular, but the guy that wrote it gave up on it, the Miguel de Acaza. Yeah, here's his blog. We brought that up on the screen, and this really bothers me because he didn't go to well, Windows. He, he went to Mac OS. Yeah, his blog post is from just a few days ago. Well, March 5th, 2013. 
And he's like, uh, I just wanted to go to Mac OS so that everything just works. And he's like, oh, come on now, guy. So I guess he'll no longer be working on GNOME. As it goes more mainstream, people are just going to pronounce it GNOME, which is fine, I guess. But, uh... No, we can't, we can't sit back and let that happen. I don't really care. We need people like us and people like the rest of the internet out there that are watching this to continue to say GNOME because we want to keep this joke going, number one. We were calling it GNOME when it was called GNOME. I mean, it, it used to stand <laughs> it for... It was called GNOME. <laughs> Before it was called GNOME. <laughs> uh, GNOME used to stand for GNU Network Object Model Environment. But now it doesn't stand for that because when it was first started, like they had a model in mind, like a software model for how they were going to do things. And then it, that's not really how it's done anymore. So it's, it's still GNOME, but it's not really an acronym anymore. So uh, they, could, they could change the pronunciation halfway through if, they, if, they, if it was an acronym and now it's not an acronym technically. So, but I mean, that's pretty, I mean, we're, we're pretty far in neckbeard territory here. <laughs> We've gone down into neckbeard, ter into neckbeard territory. Oh God! The the other forums and the other big websites would not approve of our uh, using the phrase neckbeard. He uses the phrase neckbeard. He's not professional. Uh, it cracks me up. All right, uh, <laughs> shall we go on to another question? Yeah, let me just summarize. There is like we we call it gnome because we're old school, not because we're hipster. For the love of God, don't think we're hipsters. <laughs> I don't think I'm wearing enough scarves. <laughs> 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 and uh, you're never on camera. Why are you never on camera? That's a, a million. I get a million emails. I think there's one email in here somewhere that says, why, why is Wendell not on camera? Let's go to that one next, shall we? I have a cold. Yeah, here it is. Um, hello, Win this one's from um, the clan. Is that how you say your name? I hope so. Hi, Logan, Wendell, and the rest of the tag team. I was wondering if you had any uh, comments and thoughts on Google Glass. I think Wendell uh, might have some good thoughts on this. Not saying uh, you wouldn't, Logan, without an apostrophe and wouldn't. Wendell just seems uh, to be tech slash news savvy. Uh, you know what I mean? I think, dot, 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 I hope. So regards. I like Jacob's version of that question, which is, why can't the creepy guy who's always behind the camera just sit next to you? <laughs> That's P.S. Uh, would Wendell ever host a show? Love all your vids, especially how to build a PC. Help me a lot. So would you ever host a show? Yeah, 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 yeah. we'll see. <laughs> right now I have a cold, so I'm just barely alive. So what do you think about Google Glass? Um... Google Glass is going to happen whether we want it to happen or not. not. And, you know, the whole fashion thing, yeah, that factors into it. But it's like a technological upgrade. And individuals, if the software is there and the software is useful, then people are going to do it. People look like morons with Bluetooth gear sticking out of their ear, especially the old school Bluetooth gear, which was like the size of a soda can. <laughs> but if it meant that you could take calls faster or it gave you some kind of an edge, you did it. And Google Glass is going to be like that. You might look like a moron, but if you can do something faster than somebody else or outcompete somebody for something, you're going to do it. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to have an opinion on this after reading this email, but I, it's kind of like the guy. What's the guy's name from uh, from Google who was talking about this? Who who called um, cell phones emasculating? Yeah, cell phones. Yeah, uh, who, yeah. who said that? Um, I think it was Schmidt. No, it wasn't Schmidt. It was. Um, Sergey. Um, oh, Sergey Brin. Yeah, Sergey Brin said that cell phones were emasculating, and I think he has a very good point there. And I think Google Glass may be a step in the right direction. I would prefer, well, I would prefer to like get rid of my technology altogether because I like to be off the grid. I like to be, uh, you know, you know, like not connected for a little while. I do like that. I, I think it's good to have human conversations with people uh, that do not rely on technology. Now. Having the glasses on, you're going to be looking up, you're going to be talking to people, you're going to be interfacing with them, you may be taking pictures of them. Now think about this. Everybody who has on a pair of Google Glasses has a surveillance camera, surveillance mics, they can take pictures and videos of anyone, anytime, anywhere. What are the implications there? Because I think that's really something that not a lot of people are talking about. If you go to the grocery store and you're getting bananas, and you're, you know, I don't, I don't know, maybe you don't want people to know that you're getting bananas. Someone that has on Google Glass can post on the internet that you were buying bananas. You naughty person with bananas. Um, think about that. What do you think about that angle? I think that the surveillance is already pervasive, but it's behind a black, sort of sort of a black cloak. Like, we can't get at it. The surveillance in a, a grocery store, surveillance everywhere. It's not on the internet, I guess. But the fact that you're pretty much recorded anytime you're outside, and sometimes even when you're not outside, makes me think that you need at least that level 
of recording on your own. Well, look at what's happened with Europe. Like insurance scams are such a big deal in Europe now and a lot of European countries that everybody has a dash cam. Yeah, and also a, in Russia. That's like the, everyone has a so camera. So there's all these hilarious YouTube videos now of people <laughs> like jumping out in front of a car and the guy stops in time and then the driver gets out and kicks the ass of whoever jumped in the car. That, you know, <laughs> All on video. So uh, there's going to be a lot of that. There's already a lot of that happening in our society. Oh, the the Occupy Wall Street people. Mm -hmm. A ton of people had cell phone video, and the police were lying through their teeth. And uh, the guy, you know, with the, with the police reports and the arrests and stuff, and then they had video, and some guy, you know, got off because the, the police were basically caught lying on the stands. That would have never been possible if there wasn't pervasive video. So that's at least one good thing that came out of it. So it could be good or bad. I like that it's in the in the hands of the people. But rather than corporations, I like that. But it's also in Google's hands, or it could be in Google's hands, because they could be the storage engine. So I could turn evil real fast. If you step back and look at it, there's an application that I've been working on for years that will probably not be done for years, but it's basically an individual semantic database. Think about like the timeline in Facebook but it can also organize stuff from your life. So you wear glasses and you look at a document, you can take a picture of a document, it's categorized and stored and sorted and it's in a database. Think like Jarvis from Iron Man. It's like, you know, Jarvis, store this deed for my house, store my insurance paperwork, blah, blah, blah. And then later you're like, hey Jarvis, I need my, you know, thing. Can you print it out over and here? It'll pop right up. Yeah, and so we're getting to the point with things like Siri where you can actually do that. And you can actually store this stuff in the cloud. You can do document retrieval. You can do music. You can do media. You can do stuff from your PVR. I want to build a mobile app that has a desktop tie-in that brings all these systems together so it can categorize your files. So you can tie it into Google Glass so that you could say, you'd just be walking around the house and be like, Glass, uh, the deed to my house, I need it tomorrow. Can you print it out for me? Yeah, exactly. Done. Done. And you can totally do that because the line between a file system and a database is taken away because of the semantic relationship between everything. Facebook is doing that with their graph search. So this mm. would be like graph search on a microcosm, graph search on an individual scale. On an individual level, yeah. All of your own personal data could be interrelated. Why don't you put this on Kickstarter? Well, I mean, I, I this is like a personal project. Yeah, I've been working on it for years. Just because you want it, right? I just, I really want it. <laughs> Are you going to share it once you once you finish it? I'm hoping that AI comes out of it, but I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> well, I want basically, I want Jarvis, but you know, never yeah. going to happen. All right. Uh, next question is from. Let's go to the top here, uh, Stavros. So this is about your epic music. I am currently studying at uh, Kingston University, London. And I am doing games uh, programming. My final year project is a 3D platformer, and I'm wondering if it's all right for me to use some of your music you created uh, for my menu and probably during my game scene. Uh, so anyways, it would be great to be able to include your work as part of my project, and I will include references to your team, et cetera, et cetera, YouTube. Okay. Um, hey, everybody from Cypriot. What's up? Thanks for watching. All right, now, if you guys want to use it for your video game, uh, contact me for usage rights. What I'm going to do is license it to you for like a dollar so you can use it on a personal level. That way it maintain, I can maintain my copyright and prove that, you know, it's been licensed to you or for in, a dollar. Or in, in a student project or whatever. Yeah, for whatever thing you're doing. For commercial projects, do contact me because the terms are going to be totally different and uh, we're, we got to make sure that, you know, one song doesn't go into multiple projects, and then we've also got to work out some licensing and that sort of thing. But for student projects and not-for-profit yeah. projects and things like that. And if you guys want to use it in your YouTube videos, there's some very simple usage rules, and uh, just ask me for a link. It's not going to really cost you anything. We just want to make sure everything's cool, and you guys are sending, you know, sending link back to us, and that's all there is to it. American copyright law is kind of messed up because we have to enforce rights on copyright. Otherwise, we lose the rights. Yeah, and... The only reason I even have a copyright, I would just let everyone use this, is because I don't want major studios and I don't want, you know, big companies to be able to abuse uh, what I've created. And Iron Man why. 7 featuring Zoyander. <laughs> that's what I don't want to happen. So other than that, I don't really care. I'll make everything happen for you guys. And if you guys need a custom song or something, let me know what your project is and I'll see if I have time to do it. And I'd love to help out. So if that's you, that. If you want an example of the the industry screwing somebody, you guys should look up uh, Jonathan Coulton's cover of Baby Got Back. Because <laughs> they used that in Glee and totally didn't, eat, like they used his lyrics even and totally was like, no, you get nothing. All right, next question is from Brian. Dear Logan, I'm going to be having to write a term paper soon. This paper has to address a problem with society and come up with a solution. Being the junkie I am, I chose, I choose the ever uh, disintegrating privacy on the internet. Do you know of any places I could get good sources or learn more about it. All right, well, you can head over to our forum, number one. Number two, you need to go to the EFF. 
The EFF website will have tons of information. You can see up to the minute what's going on because they almost always have uh, ongoing legal battles, petitions to sign. Uh, demandprogress.org is another place to check. Uh, do you have anything to add to that? Well, I would ask the meta question, which is, I think that everyone that knows it's a problem agrees that it's a problem. The, the question is, why aren't more people looking at that critically? Mm -hmm. That is a better question. You may also want to check out the Pirate Bay's uh, really recent documentary. It's uh, TPBAFK. And because they really get into their philosophy, there's a lot about copyism going on. You can check out that. Um, but I'm not in, totally not endorsing their philosophy because I do not think that copyism is the solution to everything. I think that there's a middle ground because we have their radicals on one side and then we've got the radicals on the other side, which would be like the RIAA and, and different governments and that sort of thing. So, and the freaking Gemma in Germany that should just die immediately because they, they are not fixing anything and they're not even willing to talk about fixing things, it, it seems to me. So, um, I think there's a middle ground, but I would start off with some of those sources and uh, head over to our forum if you guys if you have any specific questions maybe some of our guys can enlighten you and send you in different directions uh, but be careful when you're talking to individuals because individuals have agendas and opinions and you want to make sure that your term paper presents as many facts as possible and then you can form your opinion of course I mean that's what you're doing there but um, try to try to load it up with facts get some data <laughs> this one's from Alex Logan I would like to pet your beard vigorously what say you Wendell, can we have Cheryl like get his uh, information and give him the address so we can come by and we'll work that out? When I read Alex, I was thinking Alex from Half-Life 2. Alex Vance? Yep. I think it might be a guy. Alex is one of those um, ambidextrous <laughs> names. What's the word I'm looking for here? Androgynous names? <laughs> ambidextrous. <laughs> yeah. Sexually ambidextrous. I didn't, can be the, a man or a woman. The, cro the thought did not cross my mind until you actually read the question. And then I got a vision of that guy who does the really hilarious cartoons. There's just a picture of him wearing the hat that's a bear. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's Alex. Not really, but... I don't even know. I don't want to answer anymore. That's it for this episode. We've got another episode coming up very soon. We're going to shoot it right now, as a matter of fact. But you can't see it right now. Because... We're withholding it. Yeah, we're... <laughs> <laughs> It's being withheld. All right, so subscribe, everybody. Thanks for picking up Zweihander. We've got new T-shirts coming soon. I know a lot of you guys are saying, hey, the T-shirts, you're out of a certain size. You're out of my size, which is extra awesome. Oh, by the way, if you're trying to register on on the forums and you had a, you were unfortunate to have a Hotmail or a live address, Microsoft has decided that we are worthy of sending you email finally. Yeah, so Microsoft you can do hated us for a while, and they were blocking all of our emails. It wasn't even going into your spam folder, so when you signed up and it was supposed to send you a confirmation email, you weren't getting that. So if you signed up and it's like, oh god, I can't access my account, you can do the password reset thing now, and it will go to you. And as far as we can tell, it really only affected live and Hotmail users, maybe a few others. But uh, yeah, that was Microsoft. I was getting a lot of emails, and I didn't know what to do, so I was like, finally we fixed it. So anyway... That's that, and uh, sorry if you guys did have trouble with Hotmail or Live, but it works now. And it's not our fault. Microsoft just sucks. Hey, did the uh, people who had Hotmail and Live accounts, did they get another email sent out to them, or are they going to have to go back and do something again? They've got to do a password reset, because there's so many accounts that we can't send that many messages at once. Oh. Or else we, we might we, get blacklisted again. We noticed it a while ago, and we went through normal channels at Microsoft to be like, hey, there's a problem. Can you whitelist this? You know, I got a hold of Randy in tech support, and he's like, oh, yeah, sorry, no. And then he just went MIA. I don't know if he was hit by a bus or what, but we routed our email a different way, and so it works now. Yeah. All right, anyway, guys, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.